lately your boy has been having a mid-20s crisis as far as like my career goes when it comes to making music making content all this kind of stuff this video came across my page and it's called content creation is the new nine to five trap and i'm really interested in hearing what he has to say and how it can relate to me as a musician i am barack obama i am barack obama Oh no, if I don't post the reel every single day, I'll lose the attention. I speak this from experience, I'm mm -hmm. not judging. The number one way to kill your joy. It's like a dungeon. You get to do the thing you love every single day, but... People can tune in with foresight, hindsight. This is self-mastery, baby. I think in hindsight... They give you an hour. I thought he's honored. Oh my God, in hindsight? I said, well, you know, I have to listen to the rest of my program. And, and when I think about that in hindsight, that did calm me down. You know, you used to get excited, you know, for the things that you are building, for the things that you are creating, didn't you? You know, you used to immerse yourself in the process, get lost in it even, and then your focus gets fixed on the metrics or going viral again in a rush to find that, that, that fulfillment. Now, well, there's nothing wrong with speed, but it's key to know when it's time to shift gears. First, we want to harmonize, right? Have you ever pondered in one? First off, beautiful quality, most soothing voice I've ever heard. Wonder why an artist's first album seems to sometimes like be their masterpiece. I know we've all heard it before, right? Like people will say, "Oh, they lost touch after their first couple albums. You know, they're too commercial now. Oh, they sound like everybody else." But this pattern isn't just isolated to a few artists. You know, it's a common narrative for creatives and artists who was, who end up receiving some type of attention. And now we're on the internet, we all get a, a feel for it. Sometimes that first album emerges from a place of pure, raw creativity, you know? The artist was so immersed in their craft with care, untouched by the audience or its expectations or external pressures, right? Fewer deadlines, uh, way less responsibilities, just a couple of people in the basement making music and then becomes aware of the audience and then all the external pressures right it kind of reminds me of the biblical story of no that's facts i consider myself a lo-fi producer that's what i kind of settled into because i do love making it it is my favorite thing to make but if the audience didn't reciprocate the energy, if the audience didn't love it when I first started dropping all these things, my remixes and stuff like that, would I be doing it or would I have let the audience push me into a whole different direction? You know what I'm saying? If I didn't find my people, what if I'm working with artists or something? Like what, what would I be doing? And that's a great thought. Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve were naked, just chilling, enjoying life. And then they ate the apple and they gained awareness and they realize, oh my God, I'm naked. They became self-conscious. This happens to creatives and artists as well. And then, you know, the record labels are people who come in and tell you how to create, what works for the radio, what doesn't, who to collaborate with, even do little product placements in the music videos, right? And then suddenly there are a million opinions and dollars pulling that artist we love so much in so many different directions, diluting the purity and authenticity that they loved and that we loved. But this isn't just limited to music. It actually is, you uni know, it's a universal experience right now for all creators. It's interesting that he's even talking about music. Like, did he know that I was going to be watching? Is this for me? Entrepreneurs, you know, anyone with a passion, especially in this digital age, it's such a unique time. Hustle culture, right? It threatens everyone's passion, I'm telling you. The raw energy we have and we cultivate and we harness, and then the culture demands more of it and tells you faster and tells you what to make. You know, the inner spark you have tells you to go this way, but the audience, you know, didn't give you the engagement you want. So you decide to go that way instead because attention has become the new goal. Instead of the exploration, the joy, the fun, you know, the curiosity. I personally believe that creativity is a tool for discovery. 
you know, discovering our own depths, our own gifts, and then finding ways through mediums to bring them out into the world. That's crazy because growing up in this day and age, at least for me, I'm technically Gen Z. I'm right on the cusp. I was born in 97. Apparently Gen Z is right on the cusp of that. I don't know, but I had VHS, bro. But anyway, was it ever not attention? Obviously there's also money, but like, you know, these days, if you can get attention, you can get money. That's kind of the trade-off, you know what I'm saying? But when I was first doing it, it was creativity. Yeah, because originally I wanted to be a rapper. I genuinely thought I was going to be like the next Kendrick Lamar at the time. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm going to be the greatest rapper of all time. That's how I felt when I was like super, super younger, listening to 50 Cent, listening to Eminem, like really thinking I was that guy. But yeah, when I started producing, I liked that more. But then when it came to social media, I don't know, like, I'm trying to figure out when did it become the attention that I was really aiming for. I think it might have been money, though, because I had just graduated college and I needed to figure some shit out. So that's why I even started making beat videos is to hopefully find people that want to buy beats. So technically not attention, more so money. So it's tough. Is it money or attention? I don't know, dude. For other people to experience, right? And the external awards are really never promised. When we're making it, those aren't promised. Views aren't promised. Money isn't promised. Respect, accolades aren't promised. But the joy for sure is in the journey. And that is promised. Your craft, like I always say, blooms with care, not necessarily speed. But some of us, we have gotten so wrapped up in these algorithmic cycles and, you know, the attention. We are fighting for attention, even though we can't hold our attention on one thing that we love for long enough. You know, I always say when your hobby becomes your career or your business, it can be such a great thing. You get to do the thing you love every single day. But at the same time, you have to protect it at all costs or you'll lose that joy for it you know it happened to me here and this there. dude is speaking you know, to I was my here soul just sipping my tea you know using youtube as my own personal video diary you know post a video whenever i felt like it really and things took off opportunities came in at a time i really needed some opportunities resources came in more people came in demanding more 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 I had so many deadlines, I didn't even know how to live. And every day started to feel crucial. If I don't finish this video today, then I fall behind and I miss this deadline. All I gotta do is just nod my head, bro. Everything he's saying is spot on. It's all spot on. That's why I make videos like this. Like if you saw my recent video on my main channel where I was talking about I don't know what I'm doing anymore. That's why I do videos like this. Because other people are seeing these videos and getting their own kind of validation or truth that they're not crazy and shit like that. There was points I felt like I put my creativity on a manufacturing belt. That's what the algorithm kind of feels like sometimes, doesn't it? And then people will come and tell me, hey, you should hire an editor, I'll optimize your speed. And I'm like, but I like editing my videos. I mean, like, it's a part of my process. Like I've always loved it. No, 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 no. I'm like, I'm not doing that. And then the thing we love sometimes becomes the thing that we have to do. And the creative childlike spirit within, it dims. It's unfortunate, but it's okay. We can always light ourselves back up. You know, hustle culture and social media, let me tell you one thing. These platforms don't necessarily care about your expression, even if they tell you that they do. They care about attention. That's why you can have like an amazing artist or director, you know, create a film, post it on YouTube and get 5,000 views. And then a clip of Jada Pinkett saying something crazy about, well, we'll get 5.5 million views, right? We're, the, we're in the attention economy. Now, we may call it the creative economy, but it's actually the attention economy and creativity. That is a motherfucking bar right there, bro. I hear all this about the creator economy, creator economy, but is it about creation or is it about creating things that get clicks? It's simply a tool that is used to harness attention. 
And if you're not careful, you may completely lose touch with that exploration side of yourself and go right for the attention. And then you're playing cat and mouse with your own validation. And you may lose the love for the thing that you have always loved. You woke up and you were excited to do it. Now you just think about the reward or how you're going to be received. Hustle culture is here to take everything that you have and leave you dry when you're done and burnt out. It cares about its bottom, new, fresh blood, you understand? You know, I was browsing the platform the other day, um, I think it was uh, TikTok, and this creator was saying they don't even like the things that they make, the things that they post. They think it's negative, but they do it because it gets attention. Nah, that's crazy. I wouldn't do and that. And it's paying bills, like more than bills. It's getting them rich. But what they actually love to do, you know, they like to create films, you know? These films that take 30 hours to make, but unfortunately, that's too much time for the attention economy that we're in. And I could see the disappointment in their eyes, you know, like this self-imposed trap they created for themselves. And again, if you're not careful, your dream, your passion may turn into a career, which sounds great, but you also may create a new trap for yourself. This has definitely happened to me probably multiple times. It's always happening. I don't know. Is it always happening or has it just happened? I don't know if it's ended, if it's ongoing, but yeah, definitely music is my life, but then content, keeping up, keeping up, keeping up. I definitely do feel that. And I don't even just feel it. Let's keep it a bean. I feel like if I took a long break, people would disappear. Okay. That's a feeling. But at the end of the day, bro, it's the truth because I've seen it happen, bro. Like TikTok, bro, look at my TikTok at LJ the Giant. I have 700 thousand followers right i have videos with millions of views i have songs with several million videos made to them but i took a little break from posting the same type of content it was a short break bro it's not even like i just dropped off the face of the earth i just started to slowly post less and less sure enough i went from consistently having 50 to 100k views sometimes a million to a thousand views per video with 700,000 followers. So this shit happens, bro. And it's scary, especially when the attention is directly tied to your bank account, bro. So like, for example, for me, my streams on the streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, all that kind of stuff is a big portion of my income. So if I'm not getting that attention, if I'm not getting those streams on those songs, then it's directly tied to me being able to pay rent and bills and all that kind of stuff. So that's where it gets tricky because I'm like, oh, I want to take a break. But if I do, you know what I'm saying? Check out this clip by SZA. Dang, I hate going to the studio because it, it's like a dungeon. It just doesn't sound like that. Honestly, I've got to say as a fan, it sounds like it's a place of joy because no, the, the, the way that you... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That I, dang, I hate going to the studio because it, it's like a dungeon. <laughs> that's, that's the best response to that statement ever. I'm sorry that you feel that way. It's not. Um, <laughs> One of the biggest recording artists yeah, that's crazy. in the culture right now, you know, beautiful voice, beautiful vibe, says, I hate going to the studio. It's a dungeon. What? Do you think it started out like that? No, no. way, bro. No she probably way. used to rush home from her job that she hated just to have the opportunity to be in the studio, to play, to sing, to collaborate. Oh, new producer. Oh, let me hear those beats. But fame, the metrics, the audience, and the constant pressure ruined that thing that once brought her peace into something that now causes constant anxiety for her. But when I go to the studio, I think about like, damn, I have to do a good job. I have to come out of here with something. If I leave, if I'm in the studio for eight hours yeah. and I don't leave with anything that I can listen to in the car on the way home, yeah. then it makes me feel like. Let me tell you something. The number one way to kill your joy is the expectation facts, that you bro. put on yourself. This has to be good. I'm not a perfectionist. I don't sit in the studio and like, I can't leave the studio till I make something great for me. I have a task, I get in here, I get it done, 
and I'm back on the couch, bro. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing because personally, I have songs on Spotify that I would consider mid. Like some of my songs I don't really care for at all. Granted, they were good enough to be released at the time, but at the same time, it's like I skip them when they come on, like my Chill Beats to Stream to playlist or whatever. There's certain tracks that aren't in there that are my own tracks. I just don't like them. I feel like if you make music, you should like your own music, right? So why why is that the case? I don't know. Well, I'm not a perfectionist. So that is the case. Crucial to protect and nurture that creative spirit, your vision, right? Success will come, right? And balancing success and your artistic integrity is not easy, but it's not impossible. I think it's actually an opportunity why not do the things we love? But when we love something, what does it require? It requires care, it requires boundaries and consistent effort around it. The key is to stay true to our essence, navigating those demands and temptations of success. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's a balancing act. If you have found yourself constantly judging your own ideas, oh, the algorithm's not gonna like that, in this constant rush, and this worry and this anxiety and you step into your art your creation or whatever you do and it's like it's just not fun anymore you need to make a shift you've allowed the outside that's what i'm trying to figure out like i still like making music it's the content i don't really care to make what's the shift do i need to find a certain type of content that i do enjoy making or something you've allowed these platforms to get into your process again all they care about is attention. We don't chase attention. We create and then we share and then we go and create again. And how do we do this? Well, one, we stay grounded in our why. We need to regularly remind ourselves why you started. You know, was it the love for the music or the storytelling or the thrill of creating something and, you know, sharing it? Return back to your why. Realign yourself and release some of those external, unnecessary pressures. What is my and why? And set boundaries. Learn to say no. Not every opportunity or suggestion aligns with your vision or values. Setting boundaries is how you preserve the special thing that you have. What is my why, bro? Do you know? Shit. It was fun. Should the why be deeper than that? It was just like, it was fun and I felt like I was good at it. So I felt like I could do this forever. Because I didn't really like anything else. <laughs> Please, somebody help me. Everybody in the comment section right now, drop your whys. And I'm going to read through them and see if they can help me figure out my own why. I need some examples of whys. And your mental well-being. Balance passion with practicality, right? It's important to... Be practical about your career, but also carve out space for those passion projects, the things that just ignite you. And this is often where your true creativity shines, unfettered by external expectations. I actually says this, says this as well. She's like, the things I try to make, when I go to try to make a big record, it doesn't happen. It's always when I'm not even trying and the energy is just flowing. Like, I, I, I speak this from experience. I'm mm -hmm. not judging because I'm the same. When I'm li less self-aware about my experience in the moment is mm -hmm. when I'm actually at my best. Like, I'll be working on something I care about so much that's so serious. And I'm like, I'll just put on anything random. I just need like 10 minutes to just like hear something else. I don't think I've ever seen a SZA interview. She, she kind of sounds like Trisha Paytas, bro. <laughs> she's, given, uh, she's given Trisha Paytas. And that's what I'll write a whole damn song to. It'll be I Hate You or Blind or Kill Bill yeah. or The Weeknd. All those songs were palate cleanser moments in between me actually trying to make the real song of that night. Next, connect with the community. You know, connect with this community. Join this community. It's an amazing community where you can share values and, you know, your artistic vision and remind each other and support one another. Share our tips and our processes. And, have reflections that remind us what matter. And one thing I think is so important, have regular creative retreats. Even if it's just one day. One day where you're just like, you know what? 
no pressure, you know, no structure. You know, this isn't even for anybody. I'm not even posting it. I'm not even selling it. This is just a play. And always continue to experiment, right? Allow yourself the freedom to experiment. Give yourself that time. You know what I like doing? I like getting Airbnbs and making music there. I, sometimes I feel like it's a waste of money, but it's super fun to switch up the environment. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I used to love the studio, but I'll admit, I do whatever I can to not come in here sometimes. I'll go a whole week without coming in here and just be editing and making beats or whatever on my laptop on the couch. I don't know. I don't know. I used to love the skylight, bro. But now, these days, I'm like, oh, it's too fucking bright in here. <laughs> don't be, oh, I got to post every single day or else I will lose attention. If you believe that you have true talent and value, you will always be able to connect with a community that loves what you are doing. That's true. Even if you take some time for yourself, right? That is true. Don't get attached to the attention. That economy. is true, man. Come back to the reasons why you do what you do. Because that is the very thing that fuels you and gives you that sense of peace and fulfillment. Don't allow your hobby, your passion, your creative outlets to become the new nine to five trap. Guess what? We can also free ourselves as well. God damn. Yeah, I needed that, bro. That's a, man. He made some very good points. I need to figure out what my why is. Again, let me know in the comments what yours is and so maybe that could help. Process. Fuck the results. Process. Have fun. If my why was I was having fun and I thought I was good at it, maybe I just need to get better at it. Maybe I need to actually sit down, fuck the content, fuck the YouTube videos, no offense, love you guys, and just learn keys or something, bro. Let's actually learn an instrument. I think I would be happy if I was really good on that synth over there. Or I think I'd be happy if I was really good on this guitar. Maybe that's the thing. I just got to start having fun and learning things and stuff. Maybe I just like learning. I don't know. But uh, that's LJ TV for you. Catch you in the next one. I am Barack Obama. I am Barack Obama.